New Riff Rap Mold. Getting it ready and getting it out of here. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to Angling AI, everybody. My name's Gary. I'm the operations manager here. We're working hard to get our molds out and get them to you. We'll start today's action and get some things answered, get your questions going, and hopefully everything will be taken care of by the time you get out of here. We'll answer all the questions about our new molds, we'll showcase those, and we'll get some things going here. Let's meet a few people first, though. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Hello, Tell everybody hello. Yeah. See? Basically, this is where everything's going to take place. This is where all your molds are being made. This is where it all starts. We get them packaged up. We get them shipped out to you. Let's head to the office so we can get some things going on to showcase products. Hey, boss. What's happening, boss? That's our boss, Josh Clark. He's the one who makes it happen. Ronnie hey, Brand, our production manager. Tell everybody hello. Last order going off today. <laughs> all right, there we go. Make somebody happen. All right, you guys. Anytime y'all got a question, you can throw it through there. Um, how many Hosh machines do we have right now? We currently have eight. Uh, as we get better and we grow, we hopefully to get there to where we can fill this place up. We're in our new building. We just moved in in December. Uh, it's been a pleasant experience. Uh, take a little quick second to give a little prayers and a safety wish to our customers down in Florida. Uh, having that hurricane make landfall as we speak. Uh, I definitely know what that feels like. I used to live in Houma, Louisiana, where Ida went through just a little over a year ago, year and a month exactly. So I know what, how those people are feeling, and I know what they're thinking about what they're going to go home to, or if they're in their house, what it's going to look like when it's outside. So our prayers are with you, and we pray for your safety, and hopefully everybody will do the best they can to make it through, and you'll build back stronger. But as we move on to Angling AI and our products, we hope everything goes well for those people. But if you've got any questions, I'll hopefully see it come across the screen. We'll get those answered for you. But we can start showcasing a few products here. So in our fall line, we released a total of seven new molds and then a line of hand pour Cinco's. And we're not going to talk about the hand pour Cinco's today, but they were released. So I will go ahead and mention those. We have everything from three to... Uh, the seven inch version of that, uh, the five, the six, and the seven are quite large. Uh, the fives and normal sizes are core shot. The tail mold will work with that. And then the four is a smaller one, and the three is smaller, and it makes a good net bait for some of those people. Um, so, one of the things that we can talk about when we get to things uh, uh, first is we're going to talk about the way that these things kind of came out and the open pores. So, we had our 10 inch. Nice little ribbon tail worm mold, our open pore version of that. Uh, as we get closer here, you can see we got a deep cavity. It's wide, uh, got nice ribbon tail action right there. Bait is amazing in the water. Uh, guy by the name of Richard Ray has poured a lot of the seven and a halfs and has that version video on a couple of the Facebook pages out there. But some guys have fit three to five layers in here with their hand pours. People have made snakes. Uh, Chris Jones did a snake on it, uh, on World's Worst Fishing video, but it's a tremendous mold. It's only $33. So if you're just looking to get into making baits and pouring your own plastics and making your baits your way and going to put that on a hook for yourself, this is a great introductory mold for you to get into hand pouring. It pours easy. Uh, even the minimalist, the novice, the beginning hand pour can pour these. Just put them on a griddle. Uh, maybe heat them up a little bit. Some people can pour them very quickly without a griddle. It's all going to come down to your preference and what you want to do. But this is a tremendous mold. It's a great value at $33 and it's going to catch fish. And then the little brother to that is the seven and a half inch. And it's got the same width, the same depth. It's just a little shorter body. It's going to have the same great tail action. It's going to pour just as easy and it's going to make a great bait. And as I said, Richard Ray has a video of this. It's been known to catch smallmouth working on the bottom. It's caught plenty of bass. It's caught a variety of fish throughout the Michigan area and down south. So we know it's effective in a lot of different places. But you can do a lot of different things with this mold, and your imagination is the only thing that stops you. So the 10 inches, two cavities for 33 
Seven and a half is only thirty dollars for two cavities. So we've got people ordering four or five of these molds, making plenty of baits, and getting things going on with this. And they are great baits. They can be poured in swim bait. They can be poured in worm. You may come up with your own concoction, your own durometer, and make them special just for you. That's the beauty of a hand pour and making your own baits is you could pour this in a variety of different ways. You could use sinking. You could use floating. You can make a combo. You can add salt. You can change your glitter combinations. There's just so many things you do. You can pour the head in sinking and the tail in floating. There's a vast variety of things you can do and make your bait your way and make it fish exactly the way you want it to. Let your imagination go beyond color, beyond glitter, beyond powder, and you can actually control the flow of what you want to do with your plastazole. And then the last open pour we just released is the Mojo. It's 8.8 .8 inches long. It is really, really wide. It is really, really deep. You can pour several layers in this. You can pour great snakes. You can change the durometers as mentioned. But this bait is a big bait. And we have one that we poured just the other day as we were getting ready to go out and fish. So this is one of the baits that came out of the Mojo. We got three colors in it. And I poured this bait, and I'm not the most excellent hand pour. I'm definitely not as skilled as a Richard Ray or a Chris Jones out there in the world. But I'm pretty novice when it comes to hand pouring. I'm more of an injection soft plastic bait maker. But we were able to pour this very, very easily, very, very quick. And we did three colors and came up with a great bait. And while we talk about colors, we probably want to fish this in a clear water, something with a sandy bottom possibly, because we're trying to match that area of the water and the bottom and kind of give it that look to make those bass strike. So this is one of those things that we try to pour, and they can you, you can just make whatever you want with this and come up with some crazy combinations. And ch like I said, change the durometer, get the head to sink, and the tail to stay up floating for when you fish that shaky head or that stand-up jig. You might even want to get crazy and fish it in a wacky worm style because it's going to give you a lot of action as it starts to move and you start jerking it. So as you can see, this is a swim bait blend and we got plenty of action and it poured very easily. Let's see if we can get a question answered here. Ten layer mojo challenge. Haha. <laughs> yes, I think you could do that. Um, is definitely plenty of area there and that's one of the things that we'll probably start doing pretty soon on our facebook pages is having people post stuff that they made uh maybe even start having a little fish catch challenges and things like that we've got a lot of things coming out a lot of things starting for us uh we're going to do more videos we're going to do more facebook lives we're going to do more giveaways and those type of things but bait making is one of those things that you can take pleasure in it can become a hobby it can become something you start a small business in but there's really nothing better in my imagination other than the birth of my child than making a bait, putting that on a hook, going out and having it become successful and landing a nice fish and enjoying your day on the water. You don't have to go to the store and look for baits you can't find anymore. You don't have to get online and order them and wait for them to come in. You can order your moles, you can make your baits, and you can put that on a hook and go have a great day. Once again, you can make your baits your way. All right. Let's see if we got another question in here. That's a great hand pour. I thank you, Chris Jones. It, it looks good. It came out way better than what I expected. Uh, it makes me actually want to take a little more investment in my time to maybe becoming a better hand pour. Uh, that's what I can say about the new open pour moles. They are definitely very functional on a hook. They do catch fish. Uh, I was able to pour those ribbon tail worms and a great tequila sunrise. And I took them out on the water, and I used them all because they were that effective. I, I went through them all and uh, made some really great baits, and these are easy to hand pour. And if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. Uh, it's just a great way to learn, and it gives you a, a nice set of baits. they got plenty of cavities for a low-cost investment. The Mojo is $45, the 10-inch ribbon tail is $33, and the 7 and a half is 30 You can't beat that price. All right, so... More saltwater options. Well, I actually am from Louisiana, as I mentioned earlier, and we have plenty of saltwater options out there. We just have to have a little imagination and use our catalog a little bit. We've got plenty of swim baits, and we've got a bunch of little baits that can act like sand eels. And we actually have a bait that I probably have one on my desk over here that we got created for a little bit of something. But 
basically the action worms really work well under a popping cork and the speckled trout really went nuts for them back in the past i don't have that mold on my desk because i wasn't planning on it but since you mentioned salt water this really can mimic a shrimp now what's great about this mold is we offer it in hand pours or uh, open pours and we have it in both sizes we got in the 3.6 and a 4.1 we also have two injection molds for each size in a five cavity and a ten cavity but this bait right here will make the trout light on fire. This thing under a popping cork pops and that tail wagon will make it actually mimic a shrimp pretty well. Now, we don't have a tail mold for it, so I took the time to cut these and then put them back in the mold and made this bait out of it. But this is a great bait mold in salt water. You might have to come up with a couple of tricky little hook things that you have to do. I usually fish it with kind of a finesse head with a worm hook where I can come out and then stick it here and make it weedless, which is great fishing over a reef because when you make it weedless, it's not only weedless, it's now reefless. All right, so we can get that going, and this is a great bait. And if you tight line it and pop it slowly back at you like a shrimp would move, the redfish will go nuts for it too. So this is a great saltwater mold that a lot of people may not have realized is actually in our, in our product line and available online in the worms. Uh, like I said, we have it in open pour, and we do have it in injection. I'll throw that back over there. All right, let's see. We got another question here. Fellow Louisiana fishermen here love all the moles. Well, we thank you for that there, Mr. Bro. And Andrew Wilson, I hope things are going well for you down there in Florida, sir. Uh, we went through that last year. I hope everything's safe. I hope all your family and friends are safe. And we wish you the best as you all recover in the next couple of days. Uh, it also makes a good weightless jerk bait as well, that action worm, he says. And I trust what he says. He does a lot of fishing down there on the coast of Florida. All righty. Okay. We've got two more moles to kind of feature today. We have the lizard. The six inch lizard was highly anticipated and we spent some time making this mold. Uh, one of the things I can tell you about the design of our moles and the way that we go through the process of making them is we're all fishermen. Uh, not criticizing anybody out there by any stretch, but we are all fishermen. Our production manager is a big time bass fisherman. He loves the large mouth and the small mouth and all the bass that he can catch. He fishes tournaments all the time. He's got a vast experience of fishing in all kinds of different weathers and temperatures and water depths. And he's always talking about some of the designs that we make. And our owner used to be a fisherman that was on tour for a little bit. And he fished several opens and traveled the country and actually had some pretty good finishes in those tournaments and he's got into this 12 years ago and the he's opened ai and he's done a tremendous job of putting out products that actually catch fish and myself i was born in texas and raised in louisiana on the coast and i've always been on the water whether it was fresh water or salt water and did lots of fishing all the time as a kid and as i got older it was what kept me sane and kept me going and have a ton of water experience around the coast of Louisiana, fishing redfish, speckled trout, brackish waters for bass and panfish. So when it came to the lizard, we all had something to say about it, and it really took a little time to get it just like we wanted. And I think Josh did a tremendous job with the design of this mold and also with the tail mold. It, it was really spectacular uh, to watch this thing kind of come about and the way it was designed and the time it took to do it on the computer and get it programmed and get it exactly right and then not only did we do that we had to shoot the molds make sure that they were shooting properly make sure we had all that done well with the venting and the design of the mold then we had to take it to the water and we had to see how it was going to function and then we had to fish it so about two months went into the design of this mold and then and making it happen and it was hard to keep a secret because there were so many people out there requesting the lizard but this is a six inch lizard on the swim this is the bottom side as you can see we've got a little tooling down there on the bottom to give it a little bit of extra look the legs are tremendous on this mold the tail is tremendous on this mold we'll get into that a little bit more but this is the bottom of the mold and it does a great job of injection but if you just see this will give you some idea of what the bottom of the mold kind of looks like if the heads is at that flat bottom and it kind of 
has some geometry as it comes out. It is going to have some round shapes to it. It's going to smooth into areas. And we've got that flat belly and we got the geometry. And then, of course, we have that ribbon tail. And that ribbon tail is going to provide a ton of action to entice those predator fish to strike. But not only are we having that tail action, we're getting leg action, ladies and gentlemen. Our legs are moving as it falls and it moves as we rise it. It's a great little swimming lizard. The top of the mold, we're going to come to a little crest on the back. It's going to round into it. It's not just a cylinder. It's not just rectangular with some curves. This thing actually mimics a lizard pretty well. Those legs are going to move. All right, I promise you. You pour this thing in something that is less than a firm durometer and these legs are moving, it's going to stay on your hook well. We got plenty of meat up there in the head to hold that Texas rig style. You can also fish it as a weightless, however you want to do it. And that tail is going to give you plenty of action on the rise in the fall and on the swim. This is a great action lure. We cannot wait to get this on grass beds whenever we can. And we've caught plenty of fish on that up here in the north. And so far, a couple of reports in the south say it's doing tremendous down there. Uh, the tail mold for the lizard is a six cavity. It is $69. The lizard mold is $139 for the three calf six inch lizard. But the tail mold is a great design. You get six of these, so you can shoot twice with one tail mold and have six lizards. Now, I shot one in chartreuse pepper, very popular color. As you can see, the tail hangs. That's where we get in the six-inch swim. The legs, look how nice. They're thin but still firm. They got a nice solid body. As we get that camera up there, they come off the body pretty well. They're going to stay on. That head right there is going to make sure that we hold the worm hook and get that Texas rig going for us. You can see the curvature of that bait, okay, and then that flat bottom, all right? But look at that tail. That tail is going to wiggle. These legs are going to move on the rise in the fall. Now, we talked about the tail mold. Now, what makes our tail mold special is the way that we can inject the body to it. So this was a great job, great job of engineering by Josh. We actually can cover, excuse me there, we can cover part of the tail with a chartreuse coming towards the back. And we got a little ball on it. So I've also got a tail to show you. So we got the tail. Right there, we got that little bit of extra plastic with that ball on it. And that's going to give you a tremendous weld. So if that fish hits the back of that tail and it says, oh, well, I'm just going to take the tail, it's going to have to work really hard. We've actually pulled on this thing and broke the tail before we pulled the tail out of the body. Okay, so let me see if I can get this ready for you. As that tail sits in there, it covers up with that plastic, and it gives you a tremendous weld. So I can sit here and pull on it, and pull on it, and pull on it, and, and it's not coming out. And this bait wasn't shot that long ago, and it's still in there. So it's not much cure time to make that very effective for you. So that is a tremendous mold. It's going to catch a lot of fish, and we're excited about it. That ball joint in there works tremendously well, and it's a great addition. All right. Let's see if we have any other questions in here. Oh, we have a thank you. So I will definitely let the team know about that compliment and get it over there. All righty. Fantastic engineering with the ball creature. I will let Josh know that. All right. Does anybody have any questions about what we've talked about so far or what we're getting going on with the molds here and... If you got me to want to repeat or see another mold, just let me know. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to go to our new Rip Wrap Swim Bait. This was a mold that we spent another eight weeks probably designing. We definitely changed the body. We messed with scale patterns. We messed with the tail. We tried injection styles. And what we came up with was something that has caught fish in huge numbers already. Uh, can't wait to get this on the south coast. Uh, some people have it down there and said the redfish and the speckled trout are just having a field day on them. And it is the new Rip Wrap. Okay, so the Rip Wrap is four cavities. It's 139. It has a tight swimming action. It does not rock too much, so this thing throws out and that tail's moving on the fall, enticing fish to come strike, really getting in their way, aggravating them, making them want to go out and eat something. 
but you can shoot this mold in a variety of different ways. You can do just a laminate. You can do a laminate with a tail. You can do a solid body. You can do one solid color and a tail. And it gives you a great bait every time. This is severely easy to shoot. Okay, this mold shoots so well. Uh, put it in, top injection, nice slow push. Don't even have to hold pressure. Pull off, fill up, move on to the next one. It does a great job. And I will show you how to use the tail mold a little bit or describe it for you before we get out of here today. But this thing is a great friend to the tackle box. It is going to get some strikes. The hammer is the other one. If they're not wanting the hammer on a certain day because they're not looking for something searching as much, really rocking that jig head, go to this one. That tight tail wag is going to come in and play the game for you, and it's going to make them strike. All right? So the tail mold, $59. We offer a four cavity. Uh, we did that because it was just more cost effective for the consumer. It was going to be really expensive. We went bigger than four cavities, so we did the four cavity mold to go with the tails. Now this tail's got the same feature kind of like the lizard. So I've got a tail for you before I show you that feature as well. All right, so this is one of the tails we shot in the tail mold, shot it in red, but as I get it closer, you see it's got that little nub and I turn it, you can see that difference. This stays into the cavity right in the middle and allows plastics to go over it and cover it. We pulled and pulled and pulled and we broke the tail before we broke the weld as well. So this tail mold is highly effective. The best way to put tails into the mold is to put some worm oil on your fingers and rub it on the back side of the tails. And when you get it all covered from the whole back and the sides, you can take your other hand that doesn't have the worm oil and place them into the mold halfway through those in that tail section. And then all you'll do is take the other side of the mold we have right here and you'll cover it so just oil your tails place them in one and then cover it with the other and you'll close just like that and you'll have your tails in there now this swim bait is incredible so you're not just looking at the mold anymore you're actually looking at the bait in our hands okay so we got the bait in our hands we got a good shad like body it is thick it's gonna hold the hook very very well you're gonna be able to put this on a jig head or a swim bait hook and you're going to have a field day catching fish. The back of that tail is thin, creating that tight tail action. If you pull it fast, it's just going to vibrate harder. You pull it slower, it's going to vibrate tight and move. If you stop it, if you yo-yo it back to you, it's going to wag on the way down and it's going to rip on the way up. This is a great bait around rocks, around grass beds, over reefs, wherever you want to throw it. Uh, open water, you can drag it on the bottom. It has caught bass, smallmouth, uh, caught a crappie on it the other day, redfish, speckled trout, flounder. This bait has done everything in a short period of time. It's very popular already. And if you don't own one, you're doing yourself a disservice by not putting this in your tackle arsenal. As a soft plastic lure maker, you got to have this and you got to have the hammer if you're throwing swim baits. When you throw our DRs and bloodlines, you're adding to it. But these are a must-have and... These are kind of going off the shelf quick, so I would get my order in and make sure they're there. But here is where that tail comes over that bait. We shot this one in like a glow and a chartreuse tail. Very popular color on the south coast. Uh, we're getting ready to maybe do some big videos fishing and things like that and really get y'all in tune. We're going to come back and have a lot more Facebook lives. We're going to start doing blogs. We got a lot of things coming out. We're going to do some emails out there and keep you all informed and involved. And it's always going to involve one of our favorite pastimes, which is fishing. All right. Is the body small enough to for weedless fishing? Yes, in my opinion, it is. Uh, you can rig this up for weedless fishing. It's not very much plastic to push through. It's got a bigger body, but it is a triangular shape. And you can put that hook in this backside and come through the top. And you can weedless fish this as well. You put the swim baits hook on it. You can fish it weightless if you really wanted to. It won't rise as much because it has that tighter tail wag. So it's not going to get you as much lift. Uh, definitely a must have from Richard Ray. Great right there. Uh, yep, it's going to be killer on the Detroit River in the spring. A couple of walleye guys have already made phone calls about it. 
This is a bait that can catch a variety of fish, different species, and it's going to make them strike. Uh, when I fish this lately around the lakes around Jackson, Michigan, I find they're inhaling it, they're choking it, they're not just striking at it. They're really hitting it like a bait fish and going after it. I fished it on a swim jig. I fished it on just a jig head. I have not thrown it on a swim bait hook just yet, but I'm trying to get it a little deeper. I know some guys are fishing it on football jigs and deep water and having some great success as well. Are there any other questions out there? Okay, one more look at the tail. Got that action to help you hold it. One more look at that bait. Remember this mold is 139. Tail mold's 59. And you may not find a better swim bait than this in a hammer to put together. One more look at that tail mold. Four cavity. So you shoot one round of this, you got enough to shoot one round of your mold. We got the tail mold for the six inch lizard. We can shoot twice we shoot one round of tails and we can shoot two lizard molds okay so this is our six cavity lizard mold this one is 69 dollars but the lizard mold itself is 139 this is the bottom side and it's the flat side tremendous mold right here great design and this is what it looks like when it's poured and in your hand thick enough for that hook and everything on this bait is going to move and really draw a strike. Then we have our open pours. We got the 8.8 .8 Mojo. Only $45. Great way to get into pouring your own baits, making your own plastics. And that's what a triple laminate will look like. That is a three layer pour. We have the 7.5 Ribbon Tail. Only $30. And we have the 10 inch ribbon tail for 33. So some great molds to get you started if you're a novice and just gonna be a beginner. Uh, if you're an expert, they're great because it opens up your imagination. Our injection molds are really performing well. I mean, can you put that on a hook? I mean, come on. You put this on a hook, you're gonna catch a fish. So make your baits your way. Get these baits on a hook that you have. Get out there and fish and make some great things happen for you. Increase your memory. Have a great way to spend time with your family at home making baits. Get your plastics all ordered. Get your glitter ordered. Get your molds that you want to fish with. Make your baits your way. Put that on a hook and go catch some fish. We'll see you next time. It's been great being live with you. Y'all have a great day. Once again, stay safe and you're in our prayers, Florida. From Angling AI, we're out. Y'all have a great one.